Amen. Amen. Well, are you ready for the word? Uh, turn with me, please, in your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 19, verse 13. Luke chapter 19, verse 13. Look for your information. It's in the New Testament. Luke chapter 19, verse 13. I read, the Bible says, As so he called ten of his servants, delivered to them ten minas, and said to them, do business till I come. Now let's read it in the King James Version. The King James Version says, And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said to them, Occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. Somebody underline that word. Occupy till I come. And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. I'm starting a new series uh, today that I have titled The Mandate to Occupy. The Mandate to Occupy. And this is part one. The Mandate to Occupy. And this is part one. Christianity functions on the basis of progress. Christianity functions on the basis of progress. And God in his infinite wisdom has put within every child of his the DNA and the ability to progress. And that's why God put our eyes, two eyes in front of us, our legs move forward, our whole body, our head is looking forward, our hand is looking forward, everything about us is forward movement. And so Christianity is founded on the principle of fruitfulness and on the principle of progress. God always wants his people to progress. So it doesn't matter what's happened this year, even though it's a year of uh, COVID, the year of pandemic, that in our, in our generation we have never known before, we are still progressing. We are still moving forward. We are not allowing anything to deter us because Christianity is about going forward. It's about what? Going forward. So the scripture we read in the book of Luke chapter 19 verse 13, the Bible says that there was a, a man, there was a master, there was a king, or let's put it this way, God was about to travel and in the process of traveling the bible says that he called his 10 servants that means he had 10 servants in his house or probably more but he called these 10 servants and look at what he did the bible says that he delivered to them 10 pounds he delivered to them 10 pounds now notice what he delivered to them was his. It was not theirs. He delivered to them 10 pounds out of his own treasury. And when he gave them the 10 pounds out of his own treasury or out of his own resources, he gave them a mandate. And what was the mandate? He said to them, Occupy till I come occupy till I come. Now notice, he didn't show them how to occupy. But I want to understand that. I want to uh, 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 believe that this master taught his ten servants how to occupy. He taught them the principle of doing business because he himself was a businessman. So he gave them the mandate to occupy till he comes. He gave them a mandate to occupy till he comes. 
Now, the question we want to ask is, what is a mandate? What is a mandate? A mandate is an official order or commission to do something. A mandate is an official order or commission to do something. So when he told them to occupy till he comes, he was mandating them. He was giving them an official order, an official order or an official commission to do what he has commissioned them to do till he comes. Notice one thing, he did not tell his servants when he was going to come. He did not tell them when he was going to come back. The instruction of the mandate was to occupy till he comes. The mandate was to occupy till he comes. So that means until he comes, we don't stop occupying. Until he comes, we don't stop doing business. Until he comes, we don't stop winning souls. Until he comes, we don't stop reaching the lost for his kingdom. Until he comes, we don't stop the expansion of the kingdom of God. Because we have been given a mandate to do what? To occupy till he comes. I've always said that I don't need to know when Jesus is coming back. I know there are a lot of pastors and men of God out there who teach on the second coming of Christ. That is great. They teach on the rapture and sometimes they start giving timelines as to when he's going to come back. That is great. But the honest truth is that nobody knows when he is coming back, not even Jesus himself. Jesus himself does not know when he is coming back. The only one who knows when he is coming back is God Almighty. So we have been given the mandate to occupy till he comes. So what do we do? We must be ever ready. We must be what? Ever ready. Because you don't know when he's coming back. Your responsibility is to function in the mandate that you have been given. Glory be to God. Amen. So now let's go back to the same Luke chapter 19 from verse 12. And we'll read downwards. It's quite a long scripture, but we'll read it till the end. Glory be to God. Luke chapter 19 from verse 12. The Bible says that Jesus said, Therefore, a certain noble man went into a far country and received for him a kingdom and to return. I want you to underline that word. A certain noble man went into where? A far country. He went into a far country. That means this journey was a very far journey. And I want you to also understand that he is a noble man because we were introduced to him as someone who is noble. A noble man. He was a what? A noble man. Who is a noble man? A noble man is someone who belongs to the noble class. A noble man is someone who belongs to the noble class. In other words, what they do is noble. They have a reputation for integrity. They have a reputation for integrity. So he went to a very far country and notice what he went to do. He was also on a mission. The Bible says that he went to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Oh, I love that. The nobleman went to a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return and nobody knows when he was going to return glory be to god 
Hallelujah. Amen. Nobody knew when he was going to return. Mm. He was just going to go to a far country and look at what he was going to do. He had a mandate to go and receive for himself a kingdom. He went to receive for himself a kingdom. Oh, this is powerful. He went to receive for himself a kingdom. So this noble man was not just one who tells people what to do. Remember, he commissioned his ten servants. But whilst he was giving them a mandate or giving them a commission, he also went on a mission. His mission was to go and receive for himself a kingdom. He went to receive for himself a kingdom. And the Bible says that not only that, he went to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. That's why I believe that Jesus is coming back again. Jesus is coming back again. Nobody knows when he's coming. Your responsibility is to be ever ready. Your responsibility is to be a Christian who is ready at all times. Glory be to God. Verse 13, the Bible says that, And this noble man called his ten servants. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. This noble man called his ten servants. So it is always a joy mm -hmm. as a servant to work for a noble man. And God is a noble man. Hallelujah. Amen. God is always a noble man. He called his ten servants and delivered to them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. He said to them, Do what? Occupy till I come. So that means until he returns, our responsibility is to continue occupying. Amen. Our responsibility is to continue expanding. Amen. Our responsibility is to continue living holy Amen. because whether you like it or not, he is coming back again. Yes, yes. He is coming back again. But look at something, verse 14. The Bible says about his citizens. Who are citizens? The citizens of this noble man. Mm. The Bible says that his citizens hated him. Mm. Mm. <laughs> he is a noble man. He is introduced to us as a noble man, yeah. and yet he had haters. Mm. He was introduced to us as a noble man, a just man, mm. a righteous man, yet he had haters. I have good news for you, mm. child of God. Mm. If nobody hates you, then your Christian life is to be questioned. Mm. Because the day you gave your life to Christ and the day you decided to become a child of God, Number one, you become an enemy of the kingdom of the devil. The Bible says that, but the citizens of this noble man hated him. And look at what they did. They sent a message after him. They sent a delegation after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. Mm. Isn't it interesting? Wow. God is noble, God is just, God is loving, God is kind, yet many people don't want to come to God. Why? Because they hate him. Not only that, they send a message after him saying, we will not have this man reign over us. But, but the thing is, you don't have a choice. It doesn't matter what you say. He's, he's Lord. He's King of kings and Lord of lords. He made you. You have no choice. You say, oh, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in, in, in Jesus. Well, you don't have to believe in him. Whether you like it or not, one day you stand before him. <coughs> 
one day we'll all stand before him one day we'll all stand before him and we'll be judged according to our works we will be judged according to our works here on earth because once we are here on earth we are on a mission a mission to fulfill our calling verse 15 the bible says that and it came to pass when he returned now they said they don't want him to rule over them but he still returned <laughs> hallelujah it came to pass that when he returned so his returning is a matter of when and not if when he returned look at this having received the kingdom oh i love that remember in verse 12 the bible says that he went to go and receive for himself a what a kingdom yeah. and to return yes. verse 15 tells us that and it came to pass when he returned having received the kingdom so you see he is a man that does what he goes or or, or task himself to accomplish he is a doer of the word he went to receive for himself a kingdom and when he returned he returned having received the kingdom glory be to god Amen. he returned having received the kingdom he returned having received the kingdom and the next thing he did the bible says that then he commanded these servants to be called with servants those that he gave the money to the ten servants because listen to me precious one every one of us will face a day of accountability will face a day of judgment mm -hmm. the bible says in the book of hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 i think it said it is appointed unto man once to die and after that judgment so we will all stand before god one day in judgment it is appointed unto men once to die mm -hmm. you don't die twice yes. you die once so once you have this life make sure it counts Amen. and when i say make sure it counts your life doesn't count based on how many nightclubs you go how many bottles of beer you drink how many women you're able to conquer or men you're able to conquer and so on and so forth that's not what i'm saying let your life count give your life to jesus Amen. for you don't know when you're going to die mm. nobody knows when they are going to die the Bible says, and it is appointed unto men once to die, and after that, judgment. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. So, in verse 15 of Luke chapter 9, the chapter 19, the Bible says that when he returned, having received for himself the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called. Notice, he commanded them to be called. Mm -hmm he commanded them to be called glory be to god Amen. the bible says that then he commanded these servants to be called mm. unto him to whom he had given the money mm. that he might know how much everyone had gained by what by trading mm. oh glory be to glory, god glory. by trading mm. Hallelujah. Amen. So, I want you to understand that God expects all of us to be accountable. The life he has given you, one day you stand before him in judgment. Mm. And you are going to account for what you used your life for. Mm. I love that the Bible says that he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money that he might know how much every man had gained by trading Amen. question when when or when it's a matter of when when God calls you home today next week next month 
next year, next 20 years, next 50 years. Question, will your life count mm. for what he has given you? Mm. You have to account for your life. You have to account for your life. Listen, life must not be lived by chance. Mm. Life must not be lived by accident. Life must be lived by design. When you stand before God, when the day comes and you stand before God, when he commands you, when he summons you to stand before him, will you be able to accurately give account of your life? Will you be able to account for what God has given you? The Bible says that to whom he had given the money that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Glory be to God. Then came first, <laughs> then came first saying, Lord, thy pound has gained 10 pounds. Oh, powerful. Then came first, saying, so the first servant came and said, Lord, your pound that you gave me, I have traded with it and I have gained 10 more pounds. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Amen. I said, hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. So the first came and said, you gave me a pound, master, your pound has gained 10 pounds more. Mm. Let's go back to the King James Version. Mm. What does that, this mean? When the day of accountability come, mm. Will you be able to diligently account mm. for what has been given to you? Jesus. Will you be able to diligently account mm. for what God has given to you? Mm. That means the first servant was fruitful, frugal, yes. and accountable. Yes. He was fruitful, mm -hmm. he was frugal, mm -hmm. and he was accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, I always use this analogy in church that many a times people say, it's my life, it's my life, it's not your life. <laughs> it's not your life, you think it's yours, but it's not yours. Mm -hmm. One day, mm. you and I will stand before the judge. Yes. We'll stand before God and we will account for everything, minute by minute, day by day, what we use our life for. The Bible says that he said to him, he said to the first servant, well done or well thou good servant because you have been faithful in a very little have thou authority over ten cities say amen to that amen. Amen. look at how awesome that is amen. he said well done you were given a little mm. but you did what I commanded you to do you traded with the little. You occupied till I came. And as you were occupying, your little gained 10 more. Mm. And God said to him, Well done, thou good servant. Because you have been faithful in a very little, have authority over 10 cities. Glory be to God. Amen. I pray for you 
that God will give you grace yes, to have authority over 10 cities. Amen. But the only way you're going to have authority over 10 cities is when you trade with the one that was given to you. Stop looking down on what God has given to you. Stop looking down on your life. Stop saying, I have nothing. I have no one to help me. Stop giving excuses because excuses are platforms for failures. Stop giving excuses. The Bible says that he said to him, well, thou good servant. When you stand before God, are you going to hear these comments? Are you going to hear, well done or well good servant? Because you have been faithful in a very little, be faithful in the little things. Unfortunately, many want to prove to people that they are big. You don't have to prove anything to anyone. Be, be faithful in the little. I remember when we started this church, it was just my wife and I with our little child. I don't think she was a year old then. She was under a year, isn't it? Yeah. Under a year. Little. Sitting in a, in a car seat. And we'll go to church. We knew nobody in the area. But we were faithful. Mm. Preaching the gospel. Mm faithfully praying faithfully fasting we had little we did not despise our little are you following what i'm saying we did not despise our little beginning we were praying we were sowing into that little we were going out to reach out to the lost we were working with the little that god gave us and by the time we realized that little became multitudes and God started to say to us well done thou good and faithful servant you had very little but now I am going to give you 10 cities have authority over 10 cities now the reason why many people are not being given authority over 10 cities is because they have not been faithful in the little. I love Joseph. Joseph was an interpreter of dreams. When he was in prison, he did not despise his dream. He was interpreting his dream to those two people. The cup bearer, of the of Pharaoh and his warden, Joseph was faithful. Amen. He was faithful even in obscurity. He was faithful when no one was looking at him. When he was in Potiphar's house, he was faithful. The Bible says that Potiphar handed everything to him. Potiphar had no concern about anything in his house except what he ate. That was how faithful Joseph was. Joseph was not abusing the authority he was given. There are many people when they are given authority or little promotion or little power or little money, they start abusing it. Joseph never abused it. And through his diligence in managing little people, he came out of the prison and he started managing a whole nation and a whole economy and a whole world. How does that happen when you are faithful of a little? You cannot manage 10 cities if you are not able to manage one pound. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's like people who say, well, when God gives me 10 million, then I'll begin to give or I'll begin to tithe. No! If you don't tithe on your one pound, you can't tithe on 10 million. As a matter of fact, you won't get there because you have to be faithful in the one pound 
for God to see that you are faithful mm. and then he promotes you to the 10 million. You are not faithful in the one pound. You are not giving your tithe. You are not paying your tithe. You are not giving offering. You are not giving anything. And you expect God to promote you. It doesn't happen that way. Mm. All truth is power. All truth is power. I'm sure many of you watching me now have been in school or are in school one way or the other. At the end of every semester, your teacher places before you a test. The test is based on what your teacher taught you throughout the whole year, throughout the whole school term. And the purpose of the test is not to fail you. The purpose of the test is to test your understanding of what you have been taught over the year, or over the month, or over the period. So when the test is placed before you, it is now your responsibility to pass that test. Mm -hmm. Are you following what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you don't pass that test, you can't move to class six. If you're in class five, if you fail the test in class five, you have to stay in class five until you pass the test. I know in certain countries, they do mass promotion. Whether you pass or you fail, they just promote you. But that's not what I'm talking about. That's a wrong system. A system where you are promoted, not based on your competence, is wrong. Are you following what I'm saying? Any serious educational system have to test people mm. for them to pass before they are promoted. So if you are not faithful in tithing on your little level, God cannot promote you. Mm. You pray and say, God, give me, give me a big business. Give me a million. Mm. What happened to the businesses is giving you that is flourishing, mm. that you are not giving or tithing on. Mm. When we all stand before God, we'll be asked what we did with what he gave us. Quickly, as we get ready to close, the Bible says, verse 18, the Bible says, and the second, the second came saying, Lord, thy pound has gained five pounds. Mm. You see the principle of increase? The first one came, he said, your pound has gained about 10 pounds. Next week, I will expand a little bit on this, on some of the lessons we can learn out of this. Now, I want you to notice that the nobleman, the master, gave all of them one pound each. He didn't give the first man five pounds or 10 pounds. He gave him what? One pound. He gave the second one pound. But look, the pound gained 10. The second one's pound gained five. Mm. Now, Let's look at what he said to him. Verse 19, the Bible says, And he said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you were faithful in your one pound. Do you see how God promotes in his kingdom? It doesn't matter what you say. You can cry, you can shout, you can scream. If you don't do it God's way, you're not moving to the next level. Mm -hmm. If you are not a tither, you allow the devourer to come in and destroy you. Are you following what I'm saying? The devil is so cunning. The only way he's going to have access to your life and destroy you is to turn you against God in disobedience. When he turns you against God and you start walking in disobedience, that's the only way he's going to gain access and destroy you. Now look at verse 20. The Bible says that, And another came saying, Lord, behold, here is your pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> he said, For I feared thee. <laughs> Because thou art an austere man. The word austere man there means a mean man, a wicked man. 
but in 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 the beginning we were introduced to this man as a noble man he is a noble man but this servant is calling his master an austere man he said thou takest up that thou layest not down and reapest where thou did not sow and he said unto him out of thy own mouth will I judge thee precious one be careful what you say because God is going to judge you out of your own mouth he said out of your own mouth will I judge thee thou wicked servant thou knowest that I was an austere man taking up that I laid not down and reaping that I did not sow wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank that at my coming I might require my own with usury I'll explain all of this in details next week and he said unto them that stood by take from him the pound and give it to him that had ten verse 25 and he said unto him Lord he had ten look at verse 25 and they said unto him Lord he had ten <laughs> for I say unto you verse 26 for I say unto you that unto everyone that has shall be given and from whom he had not even that which he has shall be taken away from him last verse, verse 27 it says but those my enemies which will not that I shall reign over them bring them hither and slay them before me glory be to God Amen. hallelujah Amen. what am I teaching you this morning or what am I teaching you today that we have a mandate mm. to occupy till he comes Amen. Amen. we have a mandate to occupy till he comes Amen. and we must not stop until he comes for when he comes that's when we'll be rewarded in jesus name amen, amen. amen. and amen well did you receive it today amen. i want to pray with you if you're watching and you haven't given your life to jesus you don't know jesus as your lord and your personal savior if you die today you will not go to heaven you know you're not sure of your salvation i want to pray for you I want to pray with you. Say with me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I come to you just as I am. I come to you just as I am. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of Write, my name Write my name in your book of life. Book of life. May, I May I serve you all the days of my life. Of From, my today, life. From today, I have decided, I have decided to follow you. No turning, no turning back in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. amen. And amen. Well, congratulations if you pray that prayer. From the depths of your heart, I want to connect with you. Go to our website, solutionchapel.org, and, and, and there's a place for salvation. Click on there, and once you click on there, fill in the forms. We'll get back to you. We'll help you, pray with you, send you materials that will help you to grow in Jesus' name. And we'll also love to meet you in a Zoom.